Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Michael. I'll just have a little coffee here. I have a TLX coffee. My name is Michael Avis, and I'm a faculty facilitator um, and professor at the Teaching and Learning Exchange. And we're here today with three wonderful and diligent students um, for the Center of Hospitality. And we're here today to just talk about um, our VR project. Just to give you a little context, we ran a um, a series of classes in VR, and everyone here is using an Oculus Quest headset, so everyone's in their own headsets. Um, and we ran some classes in VR and in a platform called Engage. Um, and we all sort of came together today just to have a conversation about, you know, what we thought about the experience in VR, learning in VR, um, maybe some of the things that worked, guys, and maybe some of the things that didn't work. So why don't we start with you just sort of introducing yourself, saying what year you're in, what program you're in, um, and then we can start our conversation. Would anyone like to go first? Cool. Yeah, um, I'll start. Uh, so my name is Tim. I'm a end of my third term going into our fourth term uh, H131 hospitality, uh, special events management student, and uh, we're also a part of the, a group called the Associates, so we're actually working uh, in tandem to start a business together. Oh, wow. That's great. Thanks, Tim. Nikki? Hi guys, I'm Nikki. I'm also Hi. in the same program. We're just finishing up the third semester, going into fourth. It's been busy. And yeah, we've been using the VR system and it's been very interesting. That's great. Thank you, Nikki. And Marina? Yeah, hello. Marina here. Uh, I'm the same, the same in the third semester, the same program. And yeah, we've been doing most of the projects together with Tim and Nikki. So, the th so are the three of you working? Do you three of you work together in groups outside of what you do in class as well? So, what we're working on with um, Doris McEwen Bradley is a hybrid externship event, where instead of doing uh, an externship with a company, we're going to mm -hmm. try and launch our group as an event consulting firm during the term. So, it's almost an entrepreneurial venture, um, meeting the guidelines of the ministry in order to be able to. You know, check off the things of an externship and get real world experience. That's great. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for that, Tim. Um, so yeah. let's have a conversation. We did, how many classes did we have? I think three or four classes in VR. Um, why don't we start with just the question of, and I like to say, I like to talk about strength based feedback first. So let's talk about strengths first. What are some of the things um, that worked for you? when we were trying to do some of the learning in the in the Engage um, platform. Can we start with Mariana or, or, or Nikki? What, what worked for you? Mm, of course, yeah. Nikki, do you want to go ahead or do you want me to start? I'm going to go. So, hi guys, yeah. Sure. So, um, for the VR platform, um, what I loved was it was a different sensory. Um, in class, we do um, web-based meeting. Sometimes we have chats, but sometimes you want a little bit more of a engaging kind of atmosphere and VR provides that. We're able to get in the class, move around, and it feels like moving around because if you move too fast, you know, you, some of you guys know what happens, your head starts spinning and everything. But it was, it was a nice way of doing something different in the current situation because we're stuck, we're at home. So I actually felt like I was venturing out every once in a while. It made the class feel a little more practical and that's what I love about the GVC program the practicality of it. So this brought that back. That's great, Nikki. Marina? Thanks. Marina? Yeah, sure. Uh, so strength. I think I was enjoying social interaction a lot. Like we were, I, it felt like we were in a class with um, other students and we were able to communicate, walk, even to dance. Like that, that was really cool. Um, that's one thing. Another, I think I like the activity. Why do I hear like someone is clapping, no? <laughs> yeah, it's, you put your hands too close together, it, uh, it actually makes it clap. So yeah, well, just keep your hands. I think I can actually turn that off, and I will turn that off. Sorry, go ahead. OK, so uh, and uh, the activity that we did with the setup in the room, that was really cool. This is something like we weren't able to do on Blackboard, so in um, the VR world. Remember, I think it was last time, in our last lesson, when we were able to do the setup, tables, it was like in a hotel, 
Um, could you, yeah, could you explain, because some people probably have not, are not aware of what happened there, could you explain what happened in that last, in that last class? Yeah, uh, so we had to set up the room, we had to create the objects, like the tables, chairs, everything, we had to do the setup for, I think, 200 people, and this is, but the environment was like real, like you were in a real hotel, and we would I'm set up a table. If you don't mind me interrupting, Marina, it was the Hilton that you guys were in, correct? Yes. Correct. Yeah. So yes. yeah, it was the Hilton Hotel that we scanned, and you were in the actual space, same dimensions as the Hilton Hotel. So yeah, right. go ahead. Yeah. Please continue. So that's what, yeah, we were able to actually set up the room like it was in a real world, in a real um, venue. So I think that was really cool. This is something we weren't able to do on Blackboard, to do on the, any other document online on our computers. So this this was really something useful. And I might and I might yeah. add, even in real life, you, know, you didn't. Yeah. But you guys are probably not going to the Hilton Hotel uh, during the pandemic and actually going into that space and putting tables and chairs there. So even more yeah. effective than maybe than maybe what you would be doing in real life. Tim, what did you exactly. think about some of the advantages of what you experienced using VR in the classroom? Oh, uh, well, I thought it really built on it built on what we learned in first term. Um, you know, where we learned how to use social tables to create. You know. 2D floor plans, this really brought it to the next level being in a virtual third dimension. You know what I mean? Um, when you take the fundamentals from first and second term about spacing and seating, and you take things like the pandemic into consideration with, you know, if you wanted to build it in physical distancing and spacing and, you know, really incorporate real world aspects into it, but you have that safe space to be able to make mistakes. That right? you can have things that are too tight and, you know, could you, could you just quickly go into the social table? So the, um, for some people are probably not familiar. The difference between the social table software and the VR engaged software. How are those? Yeah. Different? So social tables is really it's a 2D platform for you to make layouts and floor plans based on the knowledge that you learn in catering and event management about how many tables you want to have, how many seats per table, um, flow, things like that. Um, so it's a good foundation in terms of how you should lay a room out. But in terms mm -hmm. of putting that into practical application, that's where something like Engage really allows you to experience put, you know, putting that together. Yeah, my experience, to be honest, from, a, from, a, from an observer of seeing you folks actually sitting up above and observing what you were doing and physically moving tables around yes. and figuring out <laughs> where the spaces go and the way that you were communicating and working together it really was amazing to witness um, from a uh, from No, a you're absolutely right. The overview part, the overview alone, that aspect that we're able to go up in the chairs and actually view the entire room, see how it flowed in VR at mm -hmm. real time was beneficial because you don't always get that on a 2D map, as you guys know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. You don't get okay, to so to a 2D map. That's so right. So 3D, a VR render, awesome. Yeah, so... Uh, Everything is not roses, and as you all know, because we spent a lot, we spent a lot of time together. There was a lot of difficulty. There were a lot of challenges in doing this. Um, what were the challenges? What things didn't you like? What things did you wish that could have happened? Sort of could have been a little bit more efficient in the way that we did things. What are some of some of those developing points? It's a minor programming thing, but things like picking up objects um, in other VR games. When you're able to place things down, you have a sort of um, impact, so you know when to stop. I think that was our biggest problem, because um, as we're setting up the VR tables, our tables sometimes would sink into the floor, or mm -hmm. our, our cups would disappear into the table. So getting that um, sensory of when to stop that you usually get in real life was a little clunky. So this one, that was my biggest issue. Absolutely. Or I just found that, you know, just making sure that you're prepared into a class, it does take a little bit more prep, right? Making sure that the headset's fully charged or charged enough to last however long you're in the space. Um, making sure that it's updated once it is fully charged as well. Uh, so I think having that understanding of just being in the room um, is something to consider. It's not yeah. I, I 
and I hadn't planned for. Yeah, just a disclaimer here, you three were probably our, some of our most successful users of the software and of the, of the headsets. We had a lot of challenges with uh, not only in your class, but in lots of other classes of people who couldn't get in, battery wasn't working, their Wi-Fi wasn't very uh, reliable. So there is a bias here because the tech. you three are most successful people. Yeah. I have to admit, I have a techie at home. He's very much into all these systems. So having that person, because usually we go see you guys or, you know, laugh and get assistance. And this is challenging trying to do it via whatever communication app you may have and trying to get match it up so you know which button you're pressing and which one you're supposed to connect. It, it, it's right. a little jarring. I it miss that face-to-face. -face. Yeah. Marina, what were some of the things that you thought were particularly challenging for you in the VR space? Um, I didn't have any tech issues, any challenges like that. But I've tried roller coaster aside from the class, like just during in the weekend, during the weekend once. And after that, I felt nauseous a little bit. And then in the class, I felt nauseous again. And uh, walking, especially walking through the walls in the room, I felt nauseous often. But other than yeah, that, that's... sorry, go ahead. Uh, other than that, um, I think I was good. I was good. I was okay. Yeah. It just yeah. also the time time I spent in the VR world. It has to be limited. I think not more than one hour for sure. Because yeah. after that, you get you get headache. You felt nauseous. You feel nauseous. So right. So limited time. Um, very effective and meaningful activities, rather than not just walking around socializing because there's a limited exactly. amount of time that you want to spend in a headset, right? Exactly. Uh, or maybe if you wish, it's right. going to be a longer thing, right? Maybe breaking it up, say a 10-minute break where you go and take off the headset, right? Mm -hmm. um, that um, might be something to yeah, I'm, I'm a VR child. What he's saying, um, I like um, playing some VR, and usually I do take breaks, and I find that beneficial, especially when you're playing games. So um, you don't want to just say stop, but... Um, I also think it's a matter of people, like people on a boat, getting your sea legs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For some. For some. Yeah. It, it does take a matter of system and getting used to it and seeing what you can not push. For me, I can zoom around the room and run around, but um, mm -hmm. something like a roller coaster pushes me way too far. Yeah, there mm -hmm. are certain So it really does depend. Yeah. yeah acclimatization for it, for sure. Um, I guess one final question that I would have for you is thinking about your industry and thinking about where you find three fine soon-to-be professionals are going to be, where do you think that VR and what we are practicing in right now has a role for you or a role for the industry that you will be going into? Well, it's funny because that's actually part of what our business plan is, <laughs> is, is yeah. working in virtual world and integrating new technologies into industry uh, because it is something that can hard hit. Um, and I definitely think there's a space to be able to physically, physically, so to speak. Um, air, air, VR air quality. Right. Exactly. And you can't quite move the fingers, you but it'd be really cool when you <laughs> uh, But yeah, if you, you know, say you wanted to do a half hour networking session, you'd have a chance to be able to meet people in a more intimate way than you would in Zoom, right? Uh, there are features on here where you can go to a different part of the room and have a private conversation. You wouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily be able to do that on Zoom where you might not be able to do it the same way in breakout sessions. So there's right. definitely a lot of communication and tangible um, crossover here. Um, and the user experience, even from a non-headset environment, right, I'm sure it's very dynamic for you to be watching this almost like a live taping of um, a show as opposed to a Zoom meeting. So I think there's right. some power in the medium as well. That's great. Well, yeah. yeah. I keep going. Life has proven successful and I think VR step is why not if you're going to do second life why not do second life in the VR and when you bring it into something like events um, concerts um, meetings conferences festivals, the range is just limited, and especially like the background we have now with the, and the signage. This mm -hmm. is, again, what the industry is looking for and how to brand ourselves out in a VR world. And it 
this is just a sampling. The possibilities are pretty much limitless in the VR world, which we don't know until we try. Like this is a field that's not been explored in the event side. It minimally has been done in kickstart because of COVID, but now we can really kick it up a notch because this for me was fun. I little worlds. I like the idea of um it's a decorator in me. I like the idea of creating my own little world that somebody else can come in and experience. So I, I think place for VR in events. Mm -hmm. uh, Marina, I'm going to give a so. to you. What do you, where do you see something like this affecting your professional life in five years, 10 years? What, what do you see there? Uh, it's hard to say five, 10 years because it's changing every, almost every day. But VR world, when I'm thinking about VR world, event industry for now, um, stuff like meetings, uh, conferences will be huge because it's so immersive. Like I feel like, like right now I'm in a real room with real people. I have to, I, I'm interacting, I'm talking. Mm -hmm. I feel like people are listening to me. I'm listening. It's very, it feels real. And I think it might be future for events and for meetings and conferences. Because sometimes when I'm online, I don't feel like I have to listen because yeah. I'm not really engaged. But in this environment, mm -hmm. I really feel like I'm engaged, and I, I want to listen, I want to engage, I want to talk to you, I want to listen to you, so. But listening to you three lets me, makes me think that not only is the event planning space, but the VR space are in, is in, are in good hands. And I'm really happy that the three of you were able to come today in, in your own time. I know it's exam week and you're probably really busy, but just the fact that you were able to come in this time and just share some of your thoughts and ideas with us is really, really valuable. So thank you for coming. We appreciate what you're doing, and we hope to see you sometime in VR, maybe in the next term. Absolutely. We look forward to it.